Welcome to the Harper Classroom, a series of instructional videos. This how-to video is on MRP Part 1, Introduction to MRP. The MRP video series on Material Requirements Planning is a four-part series. This video is Part 1 on the introduction and will serve as the basis for Parts 2, 3, and 4 in the video series. We'll start with describing the inputs to the MRP the master production schedule, the bill of materials, the inventory records file, then the mechanics of MRP and how it generates reports, and one primary report is the inventory policy, which is when to order and how much to order the items in the MRP. So let's start with a master production schedule. The MPS defines the required demand of each end item for production. Now the term end item that MRP uses is the same as a product, finished goods, final assembly, but in MRP it's referred to as an end item. The example that we will use in this video of the NPS, here's our required demand, and the time difference here is seven days, so this is a weekly NPS. Next, the bill of materials. Now, the bill of materials contains the product structure of the end item. For example, our end item might be a table. Our bill of materials could be as simple as a diagram. So for very simple end items, a diagram would be sufficient. For more complex end items, we have hierarchy. And here the hierarchy is that we have our end item table, and that requires two A items, tabletop layers, that go into the table, the end item. Four B items, table legs, that go into the end item, the table. And so this is the form that we will use but notice this is a one layer and you can have many different layers in the hierarchy and the demand of the A and B items is dependent on the demand of the table so therefore MRP is referred to as a dependent demand inventory system but for very large items that go into a very large end item your bill of materials could be a database and this could be a very large database but the information you need is the items the quantity of the, of the items that go into the source item, and then the description of the items. Next is the inventory records file. The inventory records file is a collection of the inventory information. Now this information is all information you need other than the bill of materials and master production schedule. But for this video we will only look at five. The first is schedule receipts. Now the definition of a schedule receipt is a future receipt of a past order release. The future and past is dependent on a present date. So the present date is going to be extremely important in MRP. But there are three types of receipts. You also have a planned receipt as of the present date if you have a future receipt of a future planned order release. Or a past receipt, a past receipt of a past order release. So as of the present date, MRP only looks at the future so it's only considering schedule receipts and planned receipts. MRP does not consider past receipts. The next information is the initial stock balance, the beginning inventory of 10, the lead time, and this is the time between when you place an order and receive an order, and a safety stock, the amount of inventory you carry to guard against stock out. The last piece of information that we will look at is the lot size discipline. The first lot size discipline is LFL which stands for lot for lot. And this means that whatever lot size you need, that's the lot size you order. Which brings up the lot size discipline rule. In MRP, you only order exactly what you need when you need it according to the lot size discipline. And let me emphasize the word only, because you only order exactly what you need. No more, no less. When you need it, not sooner or later, according to the lot size discipline. But this is only one lot size discipline. Another one that we will look at is the fixed lot size discipline. Because sometimes you can only order in fixed lot sizes. I will represent a fixed lot size discipline with an arbitrary number, say 12. And this 12 means that you can only order in fixed lot sizes of 12. You can order 12, 24, 36, 48, but you can't order anything between that. The last lot size discipline is a minimum lot size discipline and I will represent that with a number with a plus sign after it. And this just means that everything over 12 is lot for lot. 
but you can't order anything between 0 and 12. There are many more lot size disciplines than these three, but these three lot size disciplines will be used in this video series, but this video will only consider LFL. Now that we've defined the input, let's generate the indicted MRP. First, we copy the input into the MRP, perform the mechanics to obtain the output to the MRP, which is the inventory policy. In the MRP, the present date is going to be very important. We have May 1st as the present date. So as of May 1st, this MRP will be defined relative to that date. Now let's copy the master production schedule. That will be the gross requirements row, so we copy it down. So if the master production schedule is a weekly MPS, the MRP will be a weekly MRP. Next is the inventory records file. We copy the schedule receipts in the schedule receipts row. We copy the beginning inventory into the projected stock balance row. And then we copy the lead time, safety stock, and lot size discipline over here for reference. Now the bill of materials represents the relationship between the end item and the sub items. But in this video, we're only looking at the end item MRP. So we will not be using the bill of materials. So now that we've copied the items, now let's generate the mechanics. Since I've input these values, I highlight them in color. And this color indicates that these are fixed and they will not change. Now, the first time period, the week of May 8th, I copy this 10 down. I copy it from the projected stock balance, which is essentially the ending inventory of May 1st, into the inventory on hand of the week of May 8th, which is the same as the beginning inventory of the week of May 8th. Now, the projected stock balance equals the beginning inventory, the inventory on hand, plus the receipts, minus the requirements, equals the ending inventory. Here's the equation and there's the calculations. Next time period. Copy the 90 down as the inventory on hand. And now we have no receipts, no requirements, so the 90 carries over. Again, there's the equation and there's the calculations. Next time period. Bring the 90 down. But now we notice that we have an inventory on hand of 90, but we have a gross requirement of 390. Now we do not have enough inventory to satisfy our gross requirements. So that will generate a net requirement, which is our gross requirements minus our inventory on hand, which is our net requirement of 300. The net requirements is the number you compare with the lot size discipline to determine your lot size, Q. Since our lot size discipline is LFL, if we need 300, we order 300. The lot size is compared with a lead time of 2, we come back 2, and we have a planned order release of 300 which will generate a planned receipt of 300. Now notice the lot size and planned receipt are the same numbers. One is generated from the lot size discipline. The other is generated from the planned order release, but they will be the same number. Now the projected stock balance is the inventory on hand, which is 90, plus our receipts, but we don't have scheduled receipts. Instead, we have planned receipts, minus our gross requirements, equal our projected stock balance. There's the equation, there's the calculations. Now the next time period. The zero is brought down as the inventory on hand, but there's no receipts. There's uh, zero requirements, so it just carries over as the balance. The next time period. We bring down our zero as the inventory on hand, but this time we have a gross requirement of 120, so we will have a net requirements of 120. We compare that with our lot size discipline. If we need 120 for LFL, we order 120. With a lead time of 2, we come back 2 and have a planned order release of 120, and that will generate a planned receipt of 120. For the projected stock balance, we have our inventory on hand, plus our receipts of 120, minus our gross requirement of 120, leaves a balance of 0. Now that we have the MRP, the values can be used to determine the inventory policy. The planned order release row, that tells you how much to order and when to order, which is your inventory policy. So the POR is the inventory policy of the MRP. 
the values also give you more information. For example, the plant order release row provides the information to determine the order frequency, where during these five weeks we have two orders, so our order frequency is two. The projected stock balance is essentially the ending inventory of each week. The inventory on hand is the beginning inventory of each week. Well, the average of these ten numbers is the average inventory over the five-week period. Well, now that we have this information, it can be used in a number of ways. For example, this information could be used with the economic order quantity concept to determine an EOQ, an optimal lot size. Or, it can be used to evaluate your purchasing department using the order frequency as a metric. Or your warehouse using the average inventory as a metric. Or it could analyze risk, performance, or any other part of your organization. The values in MRP are valuable within an organization, but the MRP as a technique is also valuable as the basis of other techniques. MRP2 is Manufacturing Resource Planning. MRP2 extends the concept of MRP to incorporate other objectives valuable to the organization. ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, takes the concept of MRP, the objectives of MRP2, and connects them with different parts of the organization. ERP also extends those connections and communications upstream in the supply chain and downstream in the supply chain. So supply chain management uses the concept of MRP, the objectives of MRP2, and the connections of ERP in an efficient and effective manner to support strategies that improve operations. This ends the how-to video on MRP Part 1, Introduction to MRP. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.